Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Matthew Rasmussen, and today I'm going to describe the process of classical conditioning. Classical conditioning is a very easy concept to master. However, it does take time and it does take practice. The number one thing to know is the terms and then the order of the terms. Okay, and we're going to go over the terms first and then we'll go over the order and how they map out and then I'll provide another example. So classical conditioning was originally essentially thought up um, and found by Ivan Pavlov in the late 1800s. He was a Russian physiologist and actually even before he was interested in learning, he was actually originally interested in digestion in dogs and the whole bell ringing, which was actually a metronome, uh, that actually came about through the study of digestion in dogs. So nonetheless, let's bring on classical conditioning. So for classical conditioning, you need to know, learn the terms, and the terms are absolutely crucial. So the first term that you're going to have is a neutral stimulus, okay? and that can be labeled NS. Neutral stimulus, okay? And what the neutral stimulus is, that's the original item that does nothing. It elicits no response from the organism. In this situation, we can have that be, we'll just call it the bell. Okay. Now, the next term that we're going to have is the unconditioned stimulus. I'm going to play, place that as the U.S. Sometimes you may see it as the U.C.S. unconditioned stimulus. Um, I'm going to have it be um, just the U.S. And what that means is, as you may remember, unconditioned means unlearned. So it's the stimulus. S means stimulus. That's an object that's in the environment. That's the object that is unlearned that is going to elicit a response from the organism. So the unconditioned stimulus here, let's say this is food. Okay. So the unconditioned stimulus is the food. Now we're going to have to have a unconditioned response. The unconditioned response in this situation, again, unconditioned means unlearned. And the R stands for response. It's a behavior that an organism is doing. Unconditioned response, if I gave you food, what are you going to do? Well, you're automatically going to salivate. So we have salivate, salivation as the unconditioned response. Okay? So we have three so far. The only other one that we need is the conditioned aspect. Okay? There's going to be two here. So we need the conditioned stimulus. Right? C stands for conditioned, S stands for stimulus, and conditioned, that's the opposite of unconditioned. Conditioned means learned. Okay, so if you're conditioned to something, that's learned. So conditioned stimulus here, which one will this be? Well, the conditioned stimulus all is essentially always what the neutral stimulus was. So in this situation, it'll be the bow. I wrote ball. moment here. The bell. Okay? We have the other conditioned. That's going to be the conditioned response. And the conditioned response in most situations, not all, but in most situations, the conditioned response is also going to be the same as the unconditioned response. Not in everything, okay? But in most situations, and that'll be also the salivation. So we have the conditioned response being the salivate. Okay. So these are the five terms. I'll explain those in example in just a moment. But again, we have the neutral stimulus, unconditioned stimulus, the unconditioned response, and then the conditioned uh, stimulus, and then the conditioned response. Hope that helps, and tune into my next YouTube clip because I'll explain the progression of these. All right. Thanks.